slain in the spirit. Slain in the spirit. Okay, that's a whole that's a whole long topic. But it is. I've seen it sovereignly it, happen. Is it is it is it a real thing? I think it, I think it can be. Okay, and and what is it? Why and why do you say why do you say that it okay. can be? It can it can be because I think what happens there are sovereign th- times when God shows up and you see men falling on their faces. You got the Garden of Gethsemane experience where are you are you the Christ? Are you Jesus of Nazareth? You know, and He said, "I am." Uh huh. And they fell over. So they I, didn't fall down to worship Him. They they fell over. How is that at all? You know, related related to what we're talking about as far as slain in spirit. Of course, when Jesus says, "I am God in flesh," people people might fall down. But I don't think they so, fell down in worship because they arrested him two seconds later. Okay. Okay. So if they really thought he was God, remember they if they had known that they would crucify the Lord of Glory, they wouldn't have done it. Okay. So they, I don't think they had faith. I think there was a. I think something weird happened. It was just a weird thing. They just went down and went up. Right. We, and we don't know the details of that. It's not that important. However, it's not a doctrine. No, I, right. And so my thing is like I, I've never just, just, and I don't think so. But now I have to second guess myself because I'm talking to uh, Pastor Bob. Does Paul mention it anywhere? Not that no. it has to be. No. Okay. No. no. So you would say it's possible, but it's not a gift of the Spirit, and, yeah. and we people maybe right. take it too far. We know that a light shone to Paul, and whether he was on a mule or a horse on foot, he fell down. Yeah. Okay, he couldn't see. Right. I mean, so there are encounters where it's just a little bit outside the box. How about Philip? He got kind of yeah. transported. He went, we <laughs> yeah. want to get in like a Star right. Trek thing. All right. So there's all sorts of little weird nah, things. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, is true. it possible for yeah. God to come upon someone where they don't even know what's happened. The next thing you know, they're on the ground. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it happen with yeah. people who come from traditional backgrounds who don't even understand these things, wouldn't, wouldn't be involved in doing those things where the Spirit of God came upon them, and bam, they're out. However, what happens to us, I think, psychologically, what turns to be an initiation of the Holy Spirit and something God does uniquely one time with us we kind of almost like Pavlov's dogs get kind of a, an emotional, yeah. psychological response. Mm-hmm. And so we do it all the time. Yeah. And I think a lot of manifestations had a pure thing that God did. It was strange, wow. unique, but people started reacting to it, responding to it. Like it's a, like a conditioned response. Yeah. yeah. Drunk in the spirit. Now, I, I think this actually might be less heard of by even more people. Right. Uh, right. Especially young 20s yeah. teenagers specifically and um, I say that and people I think every single person has an immediate reaction in their mind going drunk and that drunk is a I thought a bad thing according to the Bible mm. now is it is it biblical does Paul talk about it? what 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 is drunk in the spirit is it yeah. is it something we should experience today is it not a thing I mean just yeah well I've seen I've never had that experience where I lost control of my mind and slurring my words and I couldn't stand up and I'm giggling my 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 head off and acting silly. But there are people who have experienced some things like that who really testify of incredible differences. So I, I, I you know the the greater question here is can God do an extra biblical manifestation? And I believe He can. Is God locked to only? how we did things in the Bible. So we'll let people be transported from one location to another because that happened to Philip, but nothing else mm-hmm. can. Well, God's creative. He could right. He could do all sorts of things. I mean, this may weird you out, but you know, in early Pentecostal history in the 20th century, early 20th century, some people actually levitated off the ground in trances and were there for like 10, 15 minutes in meetings where people witnessed it and they were like unconscious as they were receiving visions so here you know, so where is that in the new testament so my <laughs> i haven't seen it yet yeah, i haven't either um but here, so here's my thing with something like that this is what this would be like my reaction even maybe i don't know i wasn't you know wasn't there yeah. and if it's somebody i trust i go okay you know sure is it is it helpful though for for but as preachers or leaders or whatever to share that share those really unique things from from a stage or a pulpit not it, but in a way that would say we should be exp- we should want God to do cr- crazy miraculous things is that is that helpful as you were talking about earlier only because I go 
Okay. I can understand that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, so, what yeah. are your... we have to, I think we have to do two things. This is my philosophy. We got to be absolutely intelligible, as I've harped to yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and not turn people off, but yet be open for God to do things that might weird us out. Mm. Famous story of John Wimber uh, when he was a Calvary Chapel pastor in Southern California. Mm-hmm. I don't know who was in his church speaking. I just read the story in a book, but. But this young man preaching at his church on a Sunday evening service said, let's come up here if you want more of the Holy Ghost. And he had what we would call a Toronto kind of experience. It was a, you know, people were falling over. One guy fell over and started speaking into a mic and tongues. And it was just like a battlefield. And the traditional saints were slamming their Bibles and walking out. They were ticked off. And Wimber felt God. And Wimber, at the same time, was disturbed by all the confusion. Right. So he went home and he studied the revivals and he studied church history and he cried out to God all night long, was this you or was this man? And early in the morning from the East Coast, a friend who did not know anything about this called him uh, and said, John, I've been praying for you and I feel like God gave me a word, but I don't understand it. And he says, go ahead, give it. He goes, here it is. That was me. And that's how the vineyard movement kind of got birthed. Oh wow! Yeah. So, so can God yeah. mess our social etiquette up? Yeah. yeah. But I think there's a big difference between God messing our social etiquette up, and us acting super spiritual, yeah. thinking it's God. Yeah. And no. over and over and over again, you know, just like you ring a bell, we just kind of do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. In the name of uh, that's how being spiritual yeah. is. Yeah. So back natural and be open for God to do weird things. No, I think that's a, I think that's the the, the a great balance. Um, yeah. 